Oh, nice. Pizza. Yeah, help yourself. I just made it. Will do. Mmm. All right, yeah. That's some good sauce. I know it's good, right? I actually use this new vegan cheese. It's really good. Oh. What's something wrong? It's not. It's not very good. You just said you liked it. Growing up, I used to love milk and I would drink tons of it every day. Not only because I liked it, but also because it felt good to do what I was taught was healthy. I, like most kids, was told that I needed two to three servings of dairy every day. It wasn't until I was an adult that I started to hear some bad things about milk. So I switched out my cow's milk for plant-based milk, but I was still eating things like yogurt and cheese. It wasn't until I was fully vegan that I decided to give up all of the dairy in my diet. But why should you give up dairy? Dairy kills animals. I don't know about you, but well into my adulthood, I thought that cows just produced milk all the time. It wasn't until my 20s that I learned that cows have to actually have a baby in order to make milk. <sighs> Mind blown. <laughs> it makes sense though, right? That's how humans work. In order to impregnate a cow, a dairy farmer must first obtain the semen of a bull. But I won't go into that process right now. It's not pretty. Then the cow is restrained in what the industry refers to as a rape rack where the farmer will actually artificially inseminate the cow. Nine months later, a calf is born. Hooray! Not hooray. This calf would end up stealing all of the milk, AKA the profits. So the calves are usually taken away from their mothers within 24 to 48 hours of being born, either to be killed on sight, raised for veal, or if female, raised to be a dairy cow just like their mothers and repeat the cycle all over again. This process is repeated for four to five years until milk production slows or until the animal is too exhausted to repeat the process. And then they're killed for meat. So you may be thinking that eating dairy isn't as bad as eating meat because an animal didn't have to die. But the truth is, is that first the animal suffers for years and then they die. Milk equals strong bones? Dairy is good for you, right? We've all been told that we need milk because it contains tons of calcium and vitamin D. And we've all heard that milk does a body good and that milk makes strong bones. But did you know the vitamin D found in milk is actually due to fortification? Vitamin D has been added to most milk since the 1930s because vitamin D can't be found in very many foods. But our skin actually produces its own vitamin D when exposed to the sun. The amount of sunlight needed varies upon the amount of melanin in a person's skin and one's geographic location. If you aren't able to get enough sun to produce enough vitamin D, you can skip the supplement in milk and take a supplement yourself. Cut out the middleman. Calcium, however, can be found in many foods, including almonds, kale, sweet potato, spinach, tofu, and more. If milk equals strong bones, then you would think that the countries with the highest intake of dairy would have the lowest amount of fractures, right? But the opposite seems to be true. Study after study has shown a strong correlation between a higher consumption of dairy and higher fracture rates. If milk was actually protective and gave us strong bones, then this probably wouldn't be happening. The dark side of milk. So you might be thinking, so what did cows get hurt from producing dairy? At least it doesn't hurt me. But you'd be wrong. Not only does one glass of milk contain five grams of saturated fat, which is 20% of the daily recommended limit, but milk also contains mammalian estrogen, progesterone, and IGF-1, all of which have been linked to an increased risk in different types of cancers. Ditching dairy can help decrease acne and help improve digestion in many individuals. So if you're struggling with either of these issues, it might be worth switching to a plant-based option instead. On a more disgusting note, dairy is legally allowed to contain a certain amount of pus and blood. Many cows suffer from an infection called mastitis, which causes their milk to contain pus and blood. But there is a limit on the amount of pus and blood allowed, however. In Europe, the limit is 400 million pus cells per liter. In the US, the limit is 750 million pus cells per liter. The amount of pus in almond milk is zero. Milk also contains casein, which is a protein that is also found in human breast milk as well, but in far less quantities. When casein is broken down, it actually forms something called casomorphine, which is a mild opioid. And casomorphine attaches to the same brain receptors as morphine and heroin. In cheese, the amount of casein is multiplied. So if you think that giving up dairy is hard, it's because you could actually be addicted. I gotta have the cheese. You're not a baby cow. We are the only animal to unnecessarily drink milk from another animal. And we're also the only animal to drink milk into adulthood. 
We've been programmed to believe that we need cow's milk to be healthy, but why cows? Why would we as humans need the milk of a cow to survive? Why not cat's milk, or rat's milk, or whale's milk, or elephant's milk, or horse's milk, or monkey's milk, or pig's milk? Sound ridiculous? That's because it is. We live in a society where drinking cow's milk has been normalized, but when you take a step back and really think about it, it's nasty. Most of us would be totally grossed out if human breast milk was put in our coffee, or if dog's milk was put in our cereal. Most of us can't even digest cow's milk properly. That's right, approximately 65% of the world's population is lactose intolerant. So how can it be recommended as a necessary part of our diet when most of us can't even digest it? Making a change in habit can be hard no matter what it is, but giving up dairy doesn't have to be. The vegan options that are available for milk and cheese and yogurt and other dairy products keep getting better and better. So have fun with it until you find one that you like. I know it took me a couple of tries to find my favorite plant milk and my favorite vegan cheese. So just have fun with it and keep trying one until you find one you like. Don't worry about making the change overnight. Make changes step by step. And if you need help, reach out to the vegans around you for advice. This was just a quick video on dairy. If you'd like to learn more, I included some links in the description below, so check those out. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and don't forget to like this video as well. If you'd like to see anything else from Easy Breezy Vegan, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.